Now, uh, Secretary of State person, the man know my name. You know what I mean? So we got connections. We just not using them. Other communities use their connections. Other communities bust their ass and make people who they elect do what they got to do and we got to do it. And we must continue to use our, our skill sets and reignite some of the skill sets that we forgot to get to where we need to be. Stores, farms, manufacturing plants. Do you know how many wide open factories that Ford, Chrysler, General Motor, Jeep, Buick, and all the people that left wide open that we can turn into manufacturing companies so we can get a distillery, people, people. I don't know if I said this last week, but I'm gonna repeat it. Do you understand if you get the legal process if you get a distillery, not a dispensary, I'm not talking marijuana, a distillery, so you can make an alcoholic beverage, the same processes and the same legalities that it takes to have a distillery, it's the same processes it takes to have a, disp a, dis a distillery to make hand sanitizer. When are people going to stop buying hand sanitizer? Every motherfucker in the world is scared off they ass about this corona shit. And if you think it's going to stop when they open the world back up, well, motherfuckers sneeze around October, they might get their ass kicked in their, they might get their drawers kicked in their ass. So understand, these are some of the avenues we got to start looking into, start taking, so we can get it cracking. We can either get it cracking, or that motherfucker, the crackers going to be cracking with you. Those are the options, man. Those are the options. And with that being said, seeing how I used to say by the name as uh, when I'm on break, that was a short break that I took for that Gil Scott Hammer poem. I'm going to go ahead and shout everybody out. I got the brother D. Gray. I got my man Joe from Houston. My little sister Tree Tree. I got my main man DJ Finesse. You know I say, Joe, I see the sister low key in here. I got my girl Edna Murphy, aka uh, 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 Miss Unique. I got my girl Lisa Duke in the building. I got my man Jay from Cigar 365, Anu, uh, 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 he ain't in the chat room, I got Anu, I got Jack, I got Dre, and I got Boyd in the background listening, I got Irene and Dr. J in the building, I got my girl Sabrina Loney in the building, I got Joe from Houston, I already said Joe from Houston, from the office of the Redundant, uh, I got my sister Star Brooks in the building, uh, uh, I got the number one Chief Rock of Jersey Byron in the building. I got my main man DJ Knox in the building. Uh, uh, I got B Sparrow who was active in the entire get down, which is truly and truly appreciated. Thank you, Big Illinois, for uh, for the correction. I just rolled past that correction you made. I really appreciate it. I, I mean, what, uh, I got my girl Moni, Moni from Chicago in the building. I got my man Mandelion in the building. Uh, I want y'all to follow New Max Radio. I want y'all to follow X Squad Radio. I want y'all to, to follow MCDE, uh, BTR, and uh, what, what finesse at? I know finesse is part of a crew too. We gotta find the brother finesse, finesse, finesse. I want y'all to support everything on here, man. Look, we have the opportunity. MCDE, that was what uh, my man finesse said. We are in position to take over the universe. we I am trying to speak truth to power so we can get out of this bullshit. I got to teach my brother uh, Anu how to get in the chat room. He be sending me text messages. I can't read his text and the other text. But I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Good, good morning. Good evening. Good night. Look us up on any podcast or uh, uh, any any app, our apps that you use your podcast apps on. That's where we at. Support the movement. Subscribe to Built for This Network. I got our entire lineup coming up, and we got a new show with the number one Chief Rock of Jersey Burn coming up this week. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I made a suggestion. I'm not sure if he's gonna go with it. I mean, you know, it's a uh, uh, it's a different get down. But he's coming up Wednesday. Uh, I'm going to make Knox do some extra work. He already working like 19 jobs. I think Knox might be a low key to make. He already working 19 jobs. I'm going to have to uh, get him to uh, hook it up. Man. My bad, Knox. But, uh, hey, man, I really appreciate this, man. Thank y'all for supporting our movement. Thank y'all for su supporting what we got going on. And uh, if y'all wonder why this old crazy freaky music playing, I like running the jewels with a uh, killer mic and uh, I don't know the other thing. Uh, it's 
Killer Mike and the other in the white boy. That's, that's all. Killer Mike and the white boy. But uh, 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 thank you for tuning in. I got one more history fact that will enhance you and empower you. And uh, we gonna we gonna get this cracking, y'all, man. This is man H R B. This is built for this network. Y'all know I end every show. Two fingers, one word, and I'm out. If one summer we want to speak about, you know, the collective power of black people, well, what are you talking about? Do you mean the collective power of African people? You mean pan-Africanism or pan pan? Then say African. I don't understand why people are so wedded to the term black. And the justification for it is, well, it's because the European made it negative. It's the European's word. It was negative before it was applied to African people. It's like they're getting it backwards. It isn't that Europeans said, we're going to make this word black negative in order to accommodate our desire to devalue African people or dark complexioned uh, Asian people or dark complexioned Native Americans. That's not how it worked. The word black, right, absence of light, if you will, was supposed to, to, to be uh, understood by any English speaker as largely negative before it was applied to people of African or Asian ancestry. Dr. Akbar, the <clears throat> prominent African-American psychologist often talks about one of our issues is that we have become, we meaning people of the African world, whether it's the continent or, or more especially within the diaspora, so-called black folks, are very reactive rather than proactive, which means that if this individual is calling himself white, we're going to react and call ourselves black because we're the opposite. Not really understanding that we're not exactly taking a step in the right direction because now, as I like to say, given all the, cult, the linguistic and cultural baggage of black, you are trying to push an elephant uphill on roller skates. You're trying to turn a negative into a positive when there's a clean, pure, stream nearby to draw from. Uh, if you're referring to complexion, in fact, uh, there's a famous um, scene in the movie Cry Freedom about the life of Steve Biko. Uh, the presumption is that this event actually occurred. If it didn't, it still made sense in terms of the screenwriters and Richard Attenborough putting it into the film. And that is Steve Biko was in court He's charged with basically, you know, being seen as a threat to the apartheid system, and he was banned. So he's in court talking to the European judge, the Boer British judge, and the judge says to him, Why call yourselves black? I mean, you people are more brown than black. And Biko says, Why do you call yourselves white? You people are more pink than white. And the judge goes, Precisely. But there's no deeper unpacking of what just occurred. And it raises an important question about systems of oppression. Why did Europeans decide to designate themselves as white? More specifically, English-speaking Europeans, because the term white is an English term. One, you know why they chose the term. 
then you know what they sought to gain by it. When you also see that they leveled the term black against us, Asiatics, Africans, Asians, then you know what they sought to gain by imposing that on us. But why the need to fixate on black? There's the work of a Harvard uh, psychologist um, who I believe is of, of East Indian ancestry. Her name is Dr. Benaji. And her work on looking at uh, the implicit association test, which is used by psychologists to look at um, implied bias, or biases that exist, she recognizes what are often called mind bugs, or she, in fact, she's calling the term mind bugs, which are culturally imposed perceptions of reality. And the dominant perception of reality for those of us who speak the English language is when you say black or use black, its dominant use is negative. Black magic, black night, uh, black death, right? And to try to overcome that is very difficult. Now, this is a Harvard faculty member, psychologist, prominent psychologist who's pointing this out, and she calls them the mind bugs. Now, part of what people can do, you could say, well, you need to get people to stop thinking of black as something negative. Okay, that that's all right, but in the context of do you do you want to fight that battle, or more importantly, should you be fighting that battle? Because you're still reducing yourself again to your pigment. And you're not looking at yourself in the context of a larger history. And if you want to, like I said, if you want to speak of we as, as a highly melanated people, or we as an UC, or we as, as I would say, people of predominant African ancestry, that makes more sense to me. I'm just, I'm just saying. So when I looked at what Drew Ali was trying to convey and did convey, obviously, to those who heard what he was saying, back in the 19, early teens and 1920s in particular, that you are not black, you are not Negro, you are not colored. Just on a psychological level, I can see the value. I haven't even gotten into what the value and importance of what he was saying by, by having folks reject calling themselves Negro, Black, or colored, because that's a whole nother issue. I just got into the psychology of it, right? That's why people, you know, c confuse. I've often thought of this. You have a child um, reading about the Black Knight and the Black Death and the Black Plague, and then the child goes, oh, and I'm a Black child. What Benaji and others, Eric Heyman, who's another social psychologist, psychologist who's talked about this issue of implicit bias and its roots, not in the individual mind. You know, part of the pers perspective on this is um, many psychologists are now trying to figure out why is it that police tend to shoot quote unquote black men at the uh, uh, at the rates that they do? And is it because the individual police officer is overtly uh, racist? And what some of this psychology is now suggesting is it may not be a sense of overt racism, but rather the culturally imposed racism, what people used to call national character, how nations see themselves as a result of their particular histories and experiences. So, like I said, Drew Ali, just on, in terms of saying you're not Negro, Black, and colored, was getting people f out from under that weight of the negativity associated with blackness. And for people who say, well, it's better, the same person would not allow you to call him a Negro. But with all due respect, Negro is the same thing as black. If I'm speaking Spanish, I'm a, it's a Negro. I'm going to call you a Negro, right? So it doesn't make any sense. <laughs>